The politics in America are more contentious than they've ever been, but just because the arguments are fierce doesn't mean they actually matter. James Howard Kunstler is an author and a social critic. He writes a popular blog whose name we can't tell you because this is a family-friendly channel, but it's really smart. In a recent article, Kunstler said America's two major parties are, quote, just playing a game of capture the flag in the deck of the Titanic. The coming national debt crisis, he predicts, will devastate the country and make our current policy debates seem quaint. James Howard Kunstler joins us now. Jim Kunstler, long-time listener, first-time caller. I'm a fan of your blog, I will say, which I can't really describe because its name is profane, but it's very smart. And I've been reading recently your warnings to the country about the coming debt crisis. And your point is basically our politics is so crazy because it's a way of ignoring the underlying problems which are real. Can you summarize your point? Well, we have a basic problem with our economic dynamic. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of it has to do with our energy. And in the heyday of American industrialism, we got 100 barrels of oil out of the ground for every barrel equivalent that we put in. And now with stuff like shale, it's more like uh, five to one. And the aggregate uh, average is about 17 to one. And we can't really run our industrial economy and all of its uh, uh, luxuries, accessories, and furnishings uh, at that ratio. And so we've been trying to compensate for that by just uh, ramping up a lot of debt, basically borrowing from the future in order to pay for the way we live now. And, and you said that basically our political establishment, I want, to, I want to put on the screen a quote for you because I think it's really smart, but our political establishment is intentionally not paying attention. Halloween's coming super early this year, you're right, and it will be shocking, a surprise to those currently busy looking for Russians behind every potted plant in Washington, D.C. First, accept the premise that your country has lost its mind. That is what happens when societies and individuals can't face the true quandaries of a particular moment in their history. All of their attention gets channeled into fantasy, spooks, sexual freakery, conspiracies, perversion narratives, savior fairy tales. It's been quite a cavalcade of unreality these past six months with great entertainment values for the connoisseur of the bizarre until you're reminded that the fate of a nation is at stake. I think it's really smart. What happens when we hit the debt wall? What does that look like? Well, when we hit the debt wall, we, we can't borrow from the future anymore to pay for what we're doing now. And uh, we, we can't uh, uh, pay the invoices that are going to be coming into the Treasury, and we can't pay the entitlements that we're obligated to, to pay, and we can't pay back the interest on, on the previous debt. You know, one of the problems with having ramped up all this debt is that we now have to borrow more money to pay back the interest on the debt. Right. And, uh, you know, that implies that we can't really generate a whole lot of new debt because it has very poor prospects of ever being paid back. Uh, we took... So, so tell me the timeline here, though. When is this going to happen? 100 years from now? 200 years from now? No, I think it's going to be happening in, in the next few months. Uh, what happened in the fall was that the Treasury built up a kind of a war chest of about $400 billion, uh, and the idea was that uh, that would be available for Hillary Clinton, President Hillary Clinton, to use to get through the debt ceiling problem. And uh, uh, they, they managed to burn through about $90 billion a month since then. And there's about, you know, there's less than $100 billion left in the Treasury uh, for walking around money. And it's going to run out around Memorial Day. And the debt ceiling suspension that was negotiated between Speaker John Boehner and President Obama a couple of years ago, that just ran out yesterday, meaning the government cannot borrow more money without new authorization from Congress. And that, re that requires the resolution of the members of Congress to come to some agreement about it. There's very little prospect they're going to be able to do that. Um, the, the Democrats really uh, just want to use this as a lever to uh, make President Trump twist slowly, slow, slowly, to make President Trump twist slowly, slowly in the wind, as the old saying goes. Yes. And uh, you know they're gonna they're gonna do everything they can to uh, uh, make him back off unless he. Uh, uh, backs up repealing Obamacare or, or lays off of the enforcement of uh, deportation of illegal aliens. And the Republicans, of course, have their own 
historic aversion to raising the debt ceiling, and right. and you know they they more or less have been forced to go along with it, but. There are enough of them who really have an ideological opposition to it, so that it's it's really not likely to get resolved. <laughs> and so, well, I guess what cracks me up is I haven't read any of this on the front page of the paper this week. But I guess that kind of proves your thesis in the first place, doesn't it? Jim Kunstler, well, the the blog the blog is actually I can't tell you what the blog is, but put James Howard Kunstler into Google and you will find it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Tucker.